Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here with Lacey, Miss Go Electric. And, um, and we're gonna look at her brand new Model Y. And uh, how, how happy are you on a scale of one to 10? Probably eight. Eight, mm -hmm. uh, I'll work on that. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna take a quick look at the gaps and, uh, and then we're gonna have a look at the interior and then we're going to have uh, maybe maybe we'll get the opportunity to uh, to uh, to tear into Lacey's frunk because I want to see what's different if there is anything different on the um, on the heat pump and the cooling heating system that's uh, that's in here. And I think that there's been some changes. Actually, I kind of know because I've already taken a peek. So uh, I think it's going to be kind of a good a good little show. So anyway, um, you pick this up in a hurry. I picked it up March 21st, but I placed my order just a week before that. So I got it really quick. Did they know it was you? That maybe it was, you know, Elon said, wait a minute, Lacey wants it. Well, we, we took in our Tesla Model S for service to upgrade the computer. And yeah. when we did that, the sales guy knew that I was actually shopping for a Hyundai Ionic 5. And so he was very adamant <laughs> about getting me into a Tesla. And at that point I was shopping around so much so that every dealer that I would call, since they don't have them for sale in Michigan, they were charging 10K over sticker. And I said, well, if I'm already gonna pay 10K over sticker, that pretty much puts it in line with getting a brand new Model Y. So with a little bit more range, I'm already comfortable with the supercharging network. Why don't I just go with the Model Y? So I did because he told me he could get it to me within a week. In my prediction, I don't know why exactly I got it within a week because everyone's waiting like six plus months to get their Model Y. Minimum, yeah. At least. And um, I think the reason might be because it was shipped from Chicago. It could have been a reject because the panel gaps are pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, not to be a, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, a spoiler alert or whatever, but I have looked at this a little bit and um, this uh the paint jobs to die for i love this uh i love this opalescent very pretty right very sparkly yeah and it's really really well done here however um i'm less enthusiastic about some of the other stuff i saw and um actually we might as well start right, right here <clears throat> so um uh these are the kinds of uh mistakes that we were kind of looking at before you can see here that um, this is the door and uh, it's not, um, this isn't what we were kind of hoping to see. There's like a bump right here. You can, uh, you can feel it. Um, oh, that's not good either. This whole piece yeah. had a pretty bad yeah. gap there. Yeah. So you've got a, this thing's touching on this side. I don't even know how the door closes, but, um, but it gets big and wide and then goes back. And then this, this is actually, uh, it feels semi loose and and by the way uh, maybe oh that's not good either if you you've got a oh no it isn't that's the hole for uh, for humidity it feels like it needs there buffed. i uh, i've <laughs> Thanks, now gotten Sandy. rid of the uh, <laughs> uh the little burr that was on there and then we kind of like <clears throat> i haven't looked at the back yet too much i've got stuck at the but um this looks uh, this looks more balanced and whatnot. Uh, I don't see too much going on here. Move around to this side, and uh, it seems like it's exactly the same as the other side. Mm -hmm. um, same same gap. So maybe there's something different about the uh, the hatch or something. I'm not sure. This part here. Yeah, quite that, a big gap, but also well, a lot of this you can. Th this is called a, a a beauty line, not a style line. These are style lines, but a beauty line will hide your eyes because <clears throat> uh, this looks like it's black, and then when you hit this, you can't tell what's mm -hmm. going on. I do like the this. Is, if I was, um, I, I've I've recommended I don't know how many people to buy the Model Y. I just really I like it. I think if I have the money, or if I'm talking to people with a lot of money, I tell them get an X. Um, but, uh, but this is still, um, I love driving this thing. It's great for carrying stuff. I like everything about it. Can, uh, can we open it? Yep. <clears throat> yeah. 
and this is my favorite part of the uh, uh, the thing. I mean, you fold this flat, and it just it does wonders. <clears throat> and when we um, when we can, if Carl's around, I'll have him look at the interior. He's a lot more critical about these kind of things than I am, but we'll see what he has to say. But usually when I've got these kind of gaps and they match on both sides, it means that something is being tuned to something else. So can you do me a favor as well? Can you just, um, can you just open the, um, the, the charging Charge port? port? Yeah. And um, I just want to see how it, how it works. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it does touch. Can you close it again? Yep. Or, so. Yeah, you can hear it. It's, it's thumping on here. But not really. <clears throat> anyway, it, it functions correctly, so that, that part's good. But it would be great if it was a little more um, equidistant and, uh, and the gaps weren't, weren't off so much. Well, let's, um, let's take a look at, uh, look at what we got going on here. Yeah, this is uh, not not flush. <clears throat> but the uh, the gaps here seem to be pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, flushness is good on this as well, on this side. And, and here we've got, this is proud. <coughs> so this is the first thing I saw and the first thing I complained about. The hood is misaligned. Um, you can see, if you look here, this gap is like about three millimeters. <coughs> and then uh, this gap is like, um, one it's uh it's really tight on this side so you've got this this going on and i think what they did was they wanted to they, they wanted to make this work <coughs> here so they centered it they centered it on the uh, front fascia or bumper whatever you want to call it. and um and that and then they they couldn't adjust the, the other stuff but it should be should be over that way a bit and then i did notice this as well uh this uh this is quite a big um, mismatch. It's good here, but it's not good there. And um, that's, that's not, that'll, that causes wind noise. This isn't uh, very good either. And then this <coughs> here, there's, this isn't flush. This has a yeah, little Yeah, well, flushness it. here, I, I, the other side's proud as well. That's what I was mentioning mm -hmm. over there. So something's going on, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know. Where was this one built? Was this in Fremont? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I thought that they were, you know, I've looked at some of the other ones and it looked, I, I got to tell you, spectacular. I put them up against BMW or anybody else. But that gap and this gap don't match. And that gap and this gap don't match. So it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know how the build on here got out the door. Usually you have people that are, are going to do some some flushness uh, checking and whatnot. So, yeah. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just have a look at the interior? I know that um, it would be great if we had Carl, but. Uh, I'll show but, you uh, too. There's one spot in the interior that catches my eye. Oh, really? Oops. In the back seat? Or? No, it's up here. I just want to open that oh. up. So if you're looking straight out the windshield and you yeah. notice this line here, uh, do you notice anything? There's a little dip right here. Yeah, I just, I'm just looking at the, uh, the uh, height is good, uh, but there's something, you're right, it's just it's like a little um, depression or something. <clears throat> that's kind of like where there's a there's a couple connections uh, uh, fasteners that are in that general area maybe uh, maybe one of them got pulled down a little too far or maybe the uh, the guy that uh, shoved on it shoved a little too hard it's hard to say 
Um, the trim looks, this, uh, this stitching here looks, uh, looks well done. I like the idea that they, they put the stitching here where you can't see it. And, and they, this is, this isn't use, this isn't using a, like a baseball stitch. So that makes it easier to, Everything seems to function, I guess. Now, I have some accessories in here because these are really deep consoles. Yes. And so Jawa has these storage bins that have like oh, a silicone huh. top and a hard bottom. But look how deep those are. I get stuff lost in there. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'll just throw it in there. Yeah, you but, could, um, uh, you know, park old boyfriends or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, no, I really, uh, I really like this. Who makes this? Jawa. J O W U A, and I have one in my armrest as well. They have a cool. couple different styles. Um, yeah. This has a, quite a few rectangles, but there are some that have some triangle type shapes in there. But uh -huh. I liked this one the best. Well, this this looks like a good addition. I might uh, I, I think might so just too. get get that for our. Uh... Oh, and it slides out of the. Oh, oh, oh. Isn't that great? These guys just think everything. Right, yeah. and then yeah. there's one here for the armrest. So, and they sent me this light too. Oh, here because we go. Look at that. And a little USB. You, uh, yeah, USB, but I'm just saying. Yeah, the company, the, Jawa. Yeah. So you can lift this one out too, and that's a pretty deep console. There's a light in the bottom, which is great for visibility down there. Cool. But that's why I have this light here. So at night when I open this, there's a motion sensor on it. And um, it I think will- the uh, bottle underneath is proud. Jamming it, yeah. yeah. I think it's sitting on something. It wasn't sitting on it before, but. There so any um, any problems with, um, like right now, I, I cannot see much of anything. <clears throat> oh, they've changed the interior quite a bit. This is a hard surface instead of the, um, the last one we took apart was, uh, had Alcaterra, <laughs> mm -hmm. really expensive. Nice to feel, but, uh, but this feels pretty good too. It's pretty durable too. I don't have any other issues so far with the interior other than that little depression there. Hmm. I've been pretty happy otherwise. Yeah. Uh, you've got white seats again too. I did. Wowzers. <laughs> yeah, I, me and white seats just never would get along. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just try the back seat and see what, see what we got there. <clears throat> step on anything here. <clears throat> yeah, I'd say the interior build is way better than um, than uh, what you got going on in the front or uh, outside, I should say. There's also one other issue that I haven't pointed out yet, and that oh, is that? my windows up front. So, like the first week I got it, I yeah. rolled the windows down, and then they would start to roll up, and then they would drop back down, and then they would start to roll up again, and then they would like go really slow, and then finally close. But even on my way here, I tried um, bringing them back up again, and it got stuck like three times. So I had a service guy come out and he put some extra lubricant on there. But yeah. what he said was, is they have moved to a laminated glass, which this is very, very quiet on the highway. I've oh, already wow, taken it yeah. on two road trips. Oh, wow, trips, that's really major. But it makes it much heavier. So the system is still the same, but the window is heavier. So it needs extra lubrication in order to get up and that's why it's moving slower getting stuck because the motors or whatnot uh well it's probably have a extra sensor. weight um i would guess that there well that's because the doors are open but um but i would guess that it's not uh not so much the motors can't get the job done because they're doing it right now i'm guessing that it's a sensor that's looking for some kid who put his fingers in there and um and if it sees anything, if it feels anything, it goes to the sensor and it stops. It could be, it's more that as soon as it starts going up, maybe it's touching this, but <clears throat> he probably put silicon grease on it 
which that that will make things uh, go nicer. Um, has it has it happened since you yep. did the grease? Yep, it just happened today. Really? Mm-hmm. On this window or yep. the other one? On this one, but that one yeah, hasn't gotten feel. stuck well, like, yet, but yeah. this one has. That so, one just rolls up slow. So if you put your hand on here, on this, mm -hmm. and I roll it up, feel a bump. Mm-hmm. Okay, that tells me that it's got plenty of power. It when it's hitting that that stop, it's 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 actually really really stopping. So I um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing that there's something else when the door is closed. There's a uh, more force on it than. Let me just try that. That's what the service guy told me. So. <clears throat> that there's more. There's more weight, so it affects. I think it's more like it's touching this and uh, the sensors going off. Could be. That looks fine. Nope. No, that thing has got uh, plenty of power. I don't know what that would be, except for a sensor. A sensor that um, can't... Oh, I, I love those. These are better... Um, this is a better um, um, door check than what we have. We have the old, old-fashioned old ones and the one we tore out, and um, I don't like them. I like those better. Those door checks are good. So... What did they What did they say about gaps, or have you broached them, or? No, I haven't said anything because ultimately I got the car in a week. That's there's trade offs, you know. Yeah, and then you is. know when you're. Yeah. I already have a Tesla, so you know when you're buying a Tesla that necessarily the quality isn't going to be of yeah. what you see in a lot of the European European brands. And I'm okay with that. I'm not buying it for that reason. As well, long as there's no you know water that gets into it and messes up with yeah. any of the systems, then I'm fine with that. I've yeah. already taken it on a couple road trips and it's been a dream. It's so comfortable. The seats are just well, the amazing. front seats I think are the best seats in the industry. They are the best in class seats. The front seats, I love them. No back aches, no nothing. I uh, uh, the Rivian's got that's my Rivian over there, and uh, those seats are, are really kind of comfortable. comfortable. Um, the back seats in there are more comfortable than in definitely more comfortable than in the uh, the NES. I actually like the back seats in here uh, better than I did, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because the headroom or something that you get. Uh, I like this better than the three for sure. That's ours over there, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And it looks, they look kind of like the same, but for some reason or other, in the Y, it seems to just be more comfortable. I don't know why. But I, I love the ride. Um, I like to, uh, I just like this car, period. And it would be hard for me, if I'm shelling out the same amount of cash, I'd be hard pressed to, uh, to buy uh, the, the Kia or the, the Hundai, Hyundai, Ionic 5. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, 330 I like miles of range in comparison to, I think that was like 256. Two for the limited all-wheel drive version yeah. that I wanted. Yeah. So I get a little bit more range out of this and... And you got the charging system, which charging. I am really starting to find <clears throat> a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I can't get that same sort of uh, feeling of happiness out of... Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. type network, yeah. yeah. It just I doesn't, uh, doesn't do it for me. So I saw on TV, um, or TV, I saw on my computer, I watched uh, Elon talk in and he said that he's going to open up um, charging uh, for, uh, uh, for the United States and Canada. <clears throat> and I think that's great. I think that's really, really a good idea. Um, and uh, quite frankly, and he does that, I will never go to another, uh, never go to another charging station. I wish I could use my little adapter now and just start using them right away, but apparently that's not a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, Tesla's just got everybody else beat hands down for that. Yep, route so planning easy. and charging network, yeah. they're really yeah. nailing it. I think we've, we've kind of like picked on this enough. Let's go into the um, dissection room and, uh, and, and have a look at that frunk. You wanna so, rip up my frunk? I, uh, I... Okay, so here we are. Uh, <laughs> back in Lacey's frunk. And, um, and what we're doing is we're looking at what's different about this versus what we saw when we tore apart the Model, um, uh, the model Y um, in 2020. And uh, the first thing that just jumps right out at us was the 
component that goes across the, the top. They had something entirely different when they were fooling around with the plenum. Um, this, this is a brand new subassembly. And I, I noticed it right away. And you can see that the seal off for the, for the filter is right down here. And that'll seal off against the, uh, the intake that you see um, up there on the car on the uh, left hand side. So <clears throat> this has got lots of stuff going on. And one of the things I like the best about it is, you know what, you're never going to get any water ingression into this thing. This is really, and it's a bigger plenum. So this is going to give you better HVAC. Um, it's much easier to get at the, uh, the uh, air filter. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you a picture of what the, um, of what the old one looked like. Uh, we'll pop it up into the video. The thing that, uh, that you'll also see in that, uh, in that picture of the original Model Y that we looked at is, the, um, <clears throat> is this area right here where the, uh, where the compressor is. And you'll see that this has got a sound dampener. Some people call it a diaper, but this is a sound dampener here. And uh, that's for both uh, NVH and for you get some, uh, some kind of uh, 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 thermal efficiencies out of it. We looked at, <laughs> we looked at the whole thing. It looks like what they've done is they've gone through the alphabet as far as revisions is concerned because ours was like A or B and, um, and now it's double not, sorry, double zero C, which means that basically they've gone through the whole alphabet and they've added uh, three more on top of it. So we're looking at 27 revisions to this area and uh, to the average person, they probably would see absolutely nothing. I am, um, I am also impressed that they've gone with the, um, the, new, the new smaller battery. The, uh, the old lead acid thing is gone, which is great. And um, <clears throat> well, okay, so outside, uh, maybe there's some gap issues and whatnot. But when we started looking at this, the snap fits are perfect. And the... Um, uh, the, the mode of holding it in place, I couldn't ask for better. Uh, this is really, really well done. I, and I, I don't know how or what they've done, but to me, from my memory anyways, from my recollections, this actually looks even more improved. And one thing that, uh, one thing that Ben told me about was the, uh, can you uh, address the, the plastic, uh, plastic uh, molding and whatnot versus the monster that you've got over there? All right, we'll take a real quick look at the older, we have an aluminum die cast mounting bracket. This is where the lead acid battery used to sit. So this was a much heavier solution than what they have now. It's much more expensive as well. Now you can see little pieces of it, um, of plastic clear here for this bracket. This battery is much lighter than what the lead acid one was when we tore down our Model S. We talked about the weight differences and how they were able to go to a lighter weight material to support it. So they have a single bracket now that's holding the lithium ion battery and the compressor. And it's all a, uh, an injection molded, probably a nylon glass filled bracket. Well, it might not even be nylon because there's no heat here. So they might be able to drop right. it down to PP or something. Yeah, they could. Yeah, well, we, Lacey has been kind enough to let us see this um, positive if we start going in here with wrenches. <laughs> She'll, uh, that happy smile will disappear. I do have to take it home. <laughs> you do, well, you, Eventually. That's, and that's where the problem is with uh, bringing your car into Monroe. <clears throat> you wanted to bring it home too? But I, I will tell you, this is really, really well done. Um, it's always a, a joy to look at uh, a, a well-engineered package, like, uh, like what we've been looking at with uh, some of the some of the vehicles that have, we've got, like I mean the Rivian yesterday, when we looked at that, I was super impressed. Everything is just perfect, just really well done. So, anyways, Lacey, thank you so much for uh, for letting us uh, tear into your vehicle. You're a good sport. It's anytime. hard to find a anytime. a woman who's a good sport anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anytime. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, uh, we really uh, really were happy that Lacey could bring her car down and get us give us a chance to, uh, to have a look and congratulations on getting it in five days. That is really something. 
I mean, the door could be falling off. If I get one in five days, I'd be pretty, pretty happy. I am yeah. very happy. So far, I love this car, so yeah. well, can't complain. I, I, I can't complain either. This looks great. So anyway, keep watching. Thanks so very much. Um, we'll be coming back to you with more stuff probably on the, uh, on the Rivian. It's being torn down, or sorry, being tested this weekend. I'm going to be taking it off-road to uh, some place and, um, and uh, beating it up a bit. So anyway, thank you, Lacey, and thank you all for watching.